Have you ever wondered what it would be like to be awake during surgery? Well, I'm Dr. Hassan. I have probably the most insane medical research study just published in the ASA. For those who don't know, when you have surgery, most of the time, 95% of the time, if you have some big surgery, we administer some sort of muscle relaxant, which basically paralyzes your whole body during surgery. Now, one of the biggest fears that people have when it comes to surgery is being awake during the surgery. This is what in the medical field, and especially in anesthesia, we call as recall, R-E-C-A-L-L. -L. Recall meaning the anesthetic did not work, there wasn't enough of it, and you were awake during the surgery. Now, researchers just published in the ASA journal, they took 11, not 10, but 11 anesthesiologists, volunteers, administered two paralytics to them, either succinylcholine or rocuronium, and they kept them awake and they recorded their feelings after the paralysis. This is absolutely mind-bogglingly insane that 11 anesthesiologists volunteered for this. So basically, let me paint a picture for you. They took these anesthesiologists into an operating room, hooked them up to all the monitors as if they're having surgery and they put a blood pressure cuff on one of their arms they increased the pressure inside of the blood pressure cuff creating a tourniquet then they administered the paralytic without any anesthesia so for those who don't know there's two types of paralytics we routinely administer one is rocuronium one is succinylcholine one takes a lot longer one takes a lot less time the one that takes a lot less time known as succinylcholine that causes your entire body to go into spasm when it goes into spasm afterwards it relaxes all your muscles relax and that allows us to place the breathing tube without a lot of trouble. The other one takes about three minutes, but eventually your whole body just goes numb or limp. Now, by placing a tourniquet on the arm, they allowed that muscle relaxant not to reach that arm, so the patients, which are the anesthesiologists, were able to communicate with just their arm. Now, the most insane part about this is the patient was awake, the anesthesiologists were awake, and afterwards they gave them 24 hours to process their emotions and then write them down. Here we go, I'm gonna read them off for you too, off of my phone, because they're so nuts. I'm gonna put them on the screen here. Absolutely mind boggling because this is one of my biggest fears as an anesthesiologist is my patient waking up during surgery. Here we go, let's go over some of the responses that the patients, the anesthesiologists gave. I felt that I wasn't getting the ventilation that I needed even though I didn't feel particularly short of breath. This individual is feeling they weren't exchanging enough air. I pretended that it was me breathing and holding my breath and concentrating on the tourniquet pain instead of suffocating feeling of my tongue in my mouth. When you get paralyzed, your tongue usually falls in the back of your mouth as if you're sleeping, as if you're snoring, sleep apnea. The problem is you can't contract your diaphragm so you can't get any oxygen in. Immediate panic, no air movement, a fear of wanting to breathe but not being able to, irrational, prime evil, torture. That's what one of the subjects said. Trying to move my legs felt bad and caused instant anxiety. It was like being forcibly pinned down. I tested now and then to see the effect had worn off but each time I was like, oh, I didn't like that. That's surprisingly calm, I would be freaking pat, I would be freaking out. I can't describe it, it was just a horrible feeling. I found it inexplicably hilarious, remarkably it was not disturbing. That's subject number five, sounds like a psycho. Table number two from this article talks about the feeling of getting succinylcholine. Succinylcholine is basically having every single muscle in your body contract. So here we go, let's see what they said. A hot tingling rush moved from my lower body to my upper body. The tingles were like a wave of electric shocks and a sensation of high pressure. I felt it most in my thorax and my face. It was quite intense, intense but short duration. Severe cramps reminiscent of a horror movie portrayal. My head and face felt screwed up like a sheet of aluminum foil. Cramping pains in bursts everywhere, most impressive in the lower back and the gluteals. I felt like I was being electrocuted. I felt that all my proprioception was intact until I attempted to move, no effect. So basically, they felt like they could feel their arms, but they couldn't move them. The sensation of paralysis between the two agents was markedly different, quite apart from the painful fasciculations from succinylcholine. The sensation of paralysis between the two agents was markedly different, quite apart from the painful fasciculations from succinylcholine. Succinylcholine paralysis felt like a profound heaviness throughout the body, as if a giant hand was pressing me deep into the table. Whereas for most subjects, rocuronium paralysis felt is indistinguishable from lying comfortably at rest. Some did not even realize that they were fully paralyzed until they deliberately tried to move. This is from one of the professors who were running the study. However, if the ventilation was in any way inadequate, the dyspnea dominated the experience and in some cases caused marked distress. Subjects were ventilated manually via a face mask with initial tidal volumes of seven to 10 milliliters per kilogram. So if you weigh 100 kilograms, that's like 700 cc's of air. A normal person breathes over a thousand. Despite this, all subjects felt markedly short of breath 
and all signaled for much greater ventilation. The dyspnea did not resolve until tidal volumes were moved to 12 to 15 cc's per kg. If subjects tried to breathe during paralysis, it immediately invoked a sense of suffocation and panic unless that attempt coincided with the manually applied inspiration, in which it felt perfectly normal. So basically what they're saying is that if the patient, the anesthesiologist was on the table paralyzed, tried to initiate a breath and couldn't get it, they felt anxiety. If they tried to initiate a breath and a breath was given, it didn't feel that bad. Now you might be wondering how they were able to communicate. Well, if the, if the tourniquet was placed over the arm, the paralytic made its way to the arm. So they were able to squeeze the arms and they probably had some sort of code yes and no, one squeeze or two squeezes. And because of that, they were able to communicate while being paralyzed, which is insane. Now, <laughs> Now, a couple basics. When we give muscle paralysis, it's mainly for two reasons. One, to place the breathing tube. The other, to facilitate relaxation for the surgeon so they can get inside your body and correct whatever defect you have inside you. Now, in this scenario, we usually give an anesthetic that numbs your brain up so your brain doesn't realize all this is happening. In this scenario, in this particular study, they kept the people awake during the paralysis. And muscle relaxants do not numb the brain. So they were able to communicate and talk. It's basically like a horror movie where all you can do is move your eyes. But in this case, they can actually move their hands but basically in the study, a lot of the participants said that was the most comforting part that they were able to communicate. The biggest anxiety that comes from being awake during surgery is not that you're paralyzed, it's that you can't communicate. The other issue is that when you're awake during surgery itself, someone's cutting inside of you. If you're awake, you're probably feeling the pain as well. That is probably the most scary thing that I have in my mind aside from someone passing away during surgery. I do not want anybody to have any sort of recall, so I always go the conservative route. But this study, mind-bogglingly, eye-opening, mind-blowing, that 11 volunteers voluntarily paralyzed themselves in a safe situation and then recorded their responses afterwards. Absolutely insane. What do you guys think? I have so much more to share about this. I have so many thoughts. Right now, I just wanted to get this out there so more people are aware, more practitioners are aware how much stress and anxiety is caused by being awake during surgery and what type of tidal volumes we have to give in order to decrease the anxiety that comes from dyspnea. I love you guys. Thank you for tuning in. You can tell I'm so excited. I'm actually coming back from work. Do me a favor. If you can, please like and share this video. I'm trying to grow my channel. I love you guys. I'll see you on the next one. Dyspnea. You would swear that you were just not getting enough air. Have you ever tried to breathe at below FRC in small volumes? FRC is your functional residual capacity, meaning like shallow breaths.